In this lecture, we will learn how to set up our first workflow with GitHub Actions. So first of all, we will create a new repository. So here we will uh, mention the repository name. We can call it, for example, GitHub Actions Core Concepts. Here we can specify uh, the description of the repository and we can choose if you want to make this repository public or private. So for me, I will uh, keep it public. And if you want to initialize the repository with a readme file, you can do that by checking this checkbox. And now we will create the repository by clicking on the create repository button. So now the repository was created and it has only one file which is the readme file. And to see the workflows of this repository, we go here to the actions tab. By default, we will see this page because uh, we didn't yet set up any workflow. And here we find uh, some default workflows that we can set up for this repository. Now let's go back to the code tab. And I will take the repository URL. And here instead of github.com we will navigate to github.dev to open the repository in the github web ide now we will uh, go here to extensions and here we will search for uh, the github actions extension So we will install uh, this extension, uh, which will help us to create and validate our workflows. Now let's go back to the content of the repository. So now whenever we want to add a workflow to the repository, we have to create the workflow configuration file in YAML format. And the workflow uh, configuration files must be located in the .github slash workflows directory. So let's create this uh, directory. So first of all, we will create the .github directory. And in this directory, we will create another directory called workflows so all the workflow configuration files must be located in this directory in the dot github slash workflows directory so let's create our first workflow so let's call the workflow configuration file for example first workflow dot yaml and here we will write the workflow configuration so we can give our workflow a name using the name keyword we can call it for example first workflow and here in the problems tab we see the error that are coming from the workflow configuration and that's done thanks to the extension that we have installed, which is the GitHub Actions extension. So here, for example, the first error telling us that there is a required property missing, which is uh, the on property. So here we have to add the on property. And we will set it to uh, the event that we want to use to trigger the pipeline. 
For example, if we want to trigger uh, the workflow, whenever we make changes to the repository and we commit the changes, we can do that by setting the on uh, property or the on keyword to push. And here we're still seeing that we have another problem and that's because we have another required property missing, which is the jobs property. So here we mention uh, the jobs that are part of this workflow. So let's add uh, the first a job. I will call it, for example, test a job. Here using the runs keyword, we can specify where we want this job to be executed. So here I will choose Ubuntu latest. And then using the steps keyword, we can specify the commands that we want to execute part of this job. We can specify a name for each step using the name keyword. So for the first step, I will give it this name. Test a job. Welcome message. And for each step, we specify the command that we want to execute using the run keyword. So for example, here we want to echo this message. So echo, executing the test job. Let's add another uh, step. So we will call it readme file content. In the second step, we want to display the readme file content using the cat command. So cat readme dot md. Okay. So here using the name keyword. We specify the name of the workflow. Using the on keyword, we specify when we want to trigger the pipeline. Here we set it to push because we want to uh, trigger the pipeline or the workflow whenever we make changes to the repository and we commit uh, the changes. And then we use the jobs keyword to specify the jobs part of this workflow. Here we have only one job and it is called test job. We specify where we want uh, this job to be executed using the run zone keyword. And then using the steps keyword, we specify the commands that we want to execute during the job execution. Each step we give it a name using the name keyword. And we specify the command that we want to execute using the run keyword. So now let's commit the changes and see the execution of the workflow. So for the commit message, create the first workflow. So now let's uh, commit the changes. So now if we go back here and we go to the actions tab. So here we see the workflow that we have created. So it is called first workflow as we specify here in the workflow configuration file. And here we find more details about the workflow. So here is the commit that has triggered the workflow. Here we see the state of the workflow. So it is failed. Here we find the duration of the workflow execution. So let's click here on the workflow. So here we find the jobs part of the workflow. This workflow has only one job and it is called test job. 
here we see again the state of the workflow so it is failed and the total duration of the workflow execution so it took 8 seconds here if we click on the test job so here we find all the steps part of this job so of the test job so the job start first of all with the setup step so here in the setup step we find the runner version which is so the runner here is a github hosted runner and then you find some information related to the operating system of the runner and then we find some information about the runner image so it is a ubuntu image and it gives us also the included software so the software included in the ubuntu image and the image release and then we have some other steps related to the setup job like the runner image provisioner and the github token permissions that are used to set up the job and next we have the test job welcome message step so which is uh, the first step of the test job so here we execute the echo command to uh, display this message executing the test job as we specify here in the first step of the test job and then we have the readme file content step so here we want to uh, cut the content of the readme file but this step was failed and that's because the workflow was executed externally to the repository and it doesn't have access to the files and directories part of the repository so this workflow was failed because it doesn't have access to the repository in the next lecture we will start using actions and we will learn how to use the checkout action to access the content of the repository so that's it for now. Thank you very much and see you next time.